Now, uh, delegates, uh, uh, we are proceeding to uh, deal with uh, the health uh, section of our agenda. We have 11 motions, and um, the first motion is in the name of the Castle Town Gagan, Ballinagor branch of Longford Westmeath constituency. Uh, do we have a mover? Please. Mover from Balnagore Branch. It's formally moved from the floor. Sorry. Senator Jed Nash. Not of the Westmead Longford constituency. I'm not Willie Penrose. Willie sends his apologies. I think he's taking down the last of the Michael D. Higgins posters in Mullingar. Um, as we know, Willie has been an incredible advocate uh, for carers uh, during his um, two and a half decades uh, in Leinster House. We know that there are 200,000 carers across Ireland, and as we know, many of them are always there, day in and day out, uh, caring for sick, ill, disabled uh, loved ones. And it's not just a case of families depending on them. The state, of course, depends on them too. And the selfless work that carers do uh, in their homes, day in, day out, saves the state at least €4 billion Euros each year. And this puts the value, I think, of carers in our society into a real uh, economic and not just a social context. And I think, comrades, the least that a decent society can do uh, is to recognise that role by providing a non-means-tested allowance uh, to those who selflessly put others first. That's what this motion is about. This, I think, should be the mark of a decent society, and not just that, but this motion seeks as well to put other important rights for carers across our society on a legislative footing, uh, to put them in law, to codify them in law, to make sure that we have a floor of decency for those in this country who support uh, people in their homes day in, day out, 24-7. I move the motion. Thank you. Thank you. Chair, is there a seconder? Is it formally seconded? Seconded by Letty McCarthy. Uh, now we have um, a motion number two in the name of Donna Bate Branch in Dublin Fingal constituency. Um, uh, Tony McDermott, Donna Bate Branch, Fingal, proposing motion number two. Uh, Sloan Care is a bright new vision for a long overdue universal health service for Ireland. The Sláinte Care Report aims to establish a universal, single-tier health service where patients are treated on the basis of health need, not on the ability to pay. It was published by an Oireachtas Committee on the 30th of May 2017. The publication followed a hard-won cross-party political consensus. The main strategy is to separate public and private resources by phasing out private care in public hospitals and to shift usage from expensive hospital care to more cost-effective community care. An EU-wide report published today confirms that Ireland is unique in the EU as the only Western European country not to have universal health coverage at primary level. Now, Sláinte Care is a 10-year strategy which the report says will require a once-off transitional fund of 500 million per year over the first six years. An additional 2.8 billion is necessary by year 10 for expanded entitlements. In budget 2019, the Minister for Finance, whose government is supported by Fianna Fáil, failed to allocate the first 500 million instalment to create the Sláinte Care Transition Fund. This funding is needed for the building of primary care centres and other fundamental health reforms. Alan Kelly actually summed it up. He said, rather than implementing tax cuts that will mean little more than a cup of coffee to the average worker, the government could have been bold and ambitious when it comes to health. Instead, we have more of the same in health care. To get Sláinte Care back on track, we will have to work more closely in future with the political parties that are not ide ideologically opposed to Sláinte Care and are prepared to do more than pay lip service to this essential project. I urge you to support motion number two. Thank you, Is there a seconder for the motion? Formally seconded. 
Um, and uh, now motion number three in the name of Port Row Branch Tipperary. Uh, Adrian Hurley, Tipperary. On the 24th of October, Ireland, along with other WHO members, signed the Declaration of Astana, which is a new global declaration promising to strengthen the primary healthcare system as an essential step towards achieving universal health coverage. This is a welcome move. The Labour Party has consistently advocated for investment in primary care, which was shown during our time in government when we introduced free GP care for children under the age of six and those over 70. However, at the core of any primary care system is a GP. GPs are the ones who care for us at some of the most vulnerable times in our lives. GPs are in it for the long haul, with many caring for patients from the cradle to the grave. This government of Fianna Gael and Independent Alliance are putting the move towards primary health care system at risk through their inactions in agreeing on a new GP contract. For two years, we have been waiting on, on the Minister to strike a deal. A new contract cannot come soon enough for GPs in Ireland, many of whom are struggling to care for patients under the terms of an outdated contract that was first negotiated almost half a century ago. In an article in the Irish Times last year, one GP said, the petrol tank is empty, it is starting to splutter and come to a halt, and in some places it is off the road. If something is not done, you won't be able to put it back on the road. The new GP contract must reverse the cuts that were levied under FEMPI on a phased basis and must extend the cover of the contract to include chronic disease management. In our alternative budget, Alan Kelly ensured the party committed £40 million in 2019 to provide for a restoration of fees over three years. The government were silent on the funding they were committing. Comrades, I ask you to support this motion and for the party to take a lead in ensuring a new sustainable GP contract is negotiated and put in place as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Now, is there a seconder for the motion? Formally seconded. Uh, and now we move to motion number four in the name of Thomond Branch in Limerick City. Chairman, comrades, um, social policy goals should be ambitious, uh, i.e. difficult, but not impossible. Uh, providing universal coverage for access to a GP is not impossible. Um, as we heard just, just earlier there, we know it's, this is not the case because every other country in Western Europe is able to do it. Um, so if they can do it, uh, we can do it. Um, being able to access help when you're sick is perhaps the most fundamental, basic social uh, safety net of all. So we should, we should have that. No excuses, no delays. We should get on with it. Please support motion number four. Thank you. Well, do we have a second for motion number four? Seconder from formally seconded, formally seconded, and uh, motion number five now in the name of Labour Disability, Mick. Comrades, um, our motion comes really in two parts, okay? One is giving everybody with a, a, a diagnosed di a disability uh, the medal card, and that's very, very important. Um, I can speak from experience. I've got a disability. I, I had polio as a kid, and I've got the late effects of polio. And at this present moment, I don't have a medal card because I work part-time, my wife works, okay? But I'm still, when, uh, to get physiotherapy, I'm only allowed six weeks in a year to actually get physiotherapy in the, in the hospital because I don't have a medical card. To get my wheelchair, 15 years ago, I went, when I seen the consultant, and they said, look, it, use a wheelchair, it'll save your muscles and whatnot for getting around. Went to my GP, and the first thing he asked me was, have you got a medical card? 
No. Oh, I don't know what to do then, he said. What I'll do is I'll write you a prescription for a wheelchair. You know? So I was blocked out of that system. They would have been able to get the, the uh, equipment I needed to actually live a life. You know? I'm also uh, a diabetic. And at this present moment, I get all my uh, diabetic medicine free. But I still pay, and thankfully for the, uh, the drug uh, payment system, I pay 134 per month, plus nearly every two or three months, 60 euro to see my doctor to make sure the medication I'm taking is not having an ill effect on me, you know? And, I, you know, I woke up this morning and the thing in the independent was those who are uh, with disability who can't get a medical card or cannot get uh, insurance, medical insurance, are living in a twilight zone. And you know what? He's right. They're right. I am living in a twilight zone. Because I tried to get um, what's called uh, health insurance. And he said, yeah, we'll give you health insurance. But for your diabetic and your polio thing, uh, if you want to get any payment for that, you'll have to wait eight years. So I can't get that. I can't wait eight years and pay 200 quid a month and wait uh, eight years to get the treatment I need. So that is why people with disability need a medical card uh, uh, thing. Now, uh, Labour disability is trying to break down the barriers of people with disability. Uh, people who have a disability, who have the medical card, are afraid to take up employment simply because they will lose it if they're over a euro or two of the limit for the uh, thing. I know what it's like. Been there, still doing it, and still try, trying to get a medical card. The next thing, uh, the emotions in two parts, is the constant assessment of people with disability to make sure you know, they're eligible for a, a, a medical card. This puts an awful lot of strain on people, worrying if the husband or whoever walked an extra hour or two, that would bring them over the limit so they lose the medical card. It is all part of our labour disabilities, cost and disability, and that's where we need. The medical card is a big, big cost, and it's a big help to people with disability get on with their lives. And I hope you support that motion, please. Uh, thanks, Mick. And uh, now we have motion number six in the name of Greenhill's Willie Cremens branch, Dublin South West. Have we a mover? Oh, yes, my apologies, my apologies. Point, point of order taken. Uh, I, I, John Pratt seconds. Uh, sorry, I didn't call for a seconder for uh, motion number five. Um, it's formally seconded by Councillor John Pratt. Um, motion number six. Uh, have we a mover for motion number six? Uh, I leave it for a moment. Uh, motion number seven, in the name of Clonmel Branch in Tipperary. A mover. Uh, Pat Maher, Clonmel Branch, Tipperary. Chairman and comrades, conference calls on the government to ensure that the extra resources promised by the government for mental health services are put in place immediately. In spite of investments in recent years, the mental health services cannot cope with the amount of people coming forward to access supports. As of October 2017, 
just 31% of development posts in the mental health services that were promised in budgets from 2015 to 2017 were actually filled. NGOs in the mental health field believe that the government needs to invest at least another 100 million euros in the coming year if it is serious about tackling this crisis. This funding is needed now to build staff levels to ensure all service users get access to services when needed. It is needed to invest in primary care psychology services. It is needed to develop 24-hour, seven-day-a-week community-based crisis mental health services for children and adolescents. Comrades, I urge you to support this motion number seven. Thank you. We've got a seconder for the motion, formally seconded by Robert Dowd. Uh, and motion number eight now, in the name of the Mike Cullen, Loop the Rord branch, Galway West. Now we move her. We do. We move her, yes. No. Motion number nine, in the name of Clondalk and Ratcool branch, Dublin Midwest. Thank you, Chair. Eamon Drummond, Do uh, Ratcool, Clondalkin. I run an active retirement group for men in Clondalkin area. Over 30 people are in it. Do you know who made them smoke? Two. The same sort of figures you have. Uh, that's a, in a generation, if you went to, when I was a young fella, that would have been 75% of them would have been smoking. It's the same when you had uh, road traffic. Uh, it's gone down from about nearly 600 a year to 200 a year. Why don't we think we need the same type of regulation in regards to gambling in this country? There's an absolute scandal what's allowed here. T think of all the kick up there was when all the, the drink advertisement. And look at the advertising that goes on in sports for people. And it's not even a question of, oh, you should make a bet. You're getting enticements. Can you imagine the row we'd have here if you sat down to watch a football match and they said, hey, bring us up and we'll give you a cart of cigarettes and a bottle of whiskey. And yet, to give 20, 10, 5, 10, 20 euros into your account, and the people who are sitting in those accounts, they will put limits if you're starting to win, but if you lose, you're on your own. They can see up in front of them how much, many bets you make in the day, they can see it escalating, how much you're losing, and yet they're doing nothing about it. They're not allowed to do anything about it. But if you're winning, they, put, uh, they have flagged what they call it's flagged. We need to move on this. Why would we not go and help people, just to help people who have terrible problems in regards to gambling? And everybody in this room, whether they know it or not, knows people, a person who has a gambling problem. But they're not going around like they're stoned, they're not going to look. They're straight standing up people, but it's a silent killer for, for families. And you can lose everything in a day. Now, I know that our minister, our spokes help, helped, spokesman is very busy, but I hope he gives time not just to pass this and put, you know, I no doubt you will pass it, but actually do, do something about it. Somebody needs to do something to help those people. Thank you very much, Debbie. Thank you. Is there a seconder for the motion? Formally seconded. So, motion number 10 in the name of Labour Women. Hi, Ellen O'Sullivan, uh, Chair of Labour Women. The repeal referendum yielded an amazing result in May, and I can see many, many people in this room who played a huge part in that. However, in the over five months since the Eighth Amendment was repealed, many, many women have still had to travel or take a legal pill to access abortion. So we call on the government as a matter of urgency to enact the legislation and to enact legislation in line with the recommendations from the Joint Oireachtas Committee. This is something that we think is well overdue. We also acknowledge that a truly pro-choice Ireland needs to be more than just provision for abortion. We want an Ireland that supports women in their reproductive rights through things like more comprehensive sex education, access to contraception, and for better childcare support. So we hope you support this motion. Thank you very much. Is there a 
second for uh, motion number 10, formally seconded. And motion number 11 in the name of Labour LGBT. Ian. Ian McGahan, Communications Officer of Labour LGBT. Conference. Firstly, I would like to recognise this as a very historic moment because it is actually the first time that a motion from Labour LGBT is on a conference agenda. <laughs> this motion is about PrEP, pre-exposure prophylaxis. PrEP can be used by everyone here in this room, whether you're gay, bisexual, transgender, heterosexual, cisgender, literally everyone. While PrEP is widely available and used, it is also contributing to significant reductions in the number of new HIV diagnoses. With, in Ireland, HIV diagnosis is an, at an all-time high, and it's really vital here that it's made freely accessible to all. It's approved for use in Europe and is currently provided through the national health system in France, Norway, Scotland, Wales, Portugal and Belgium. PrEP works by, by preventing HIV from replication and establishing an infection in the body after an exposure to the virus. Real world experience shows us that when it's used correctly, PrEP is actually hugely decreasing the, the in, the uh, rates of new HIV diagnosis. Since 2016, actually in Ireland, new HIV diagnoses are at, an, at the highest, ev highest ever recorded levels. As this is actually in, in part due to improvements in diagnosis, but it's also their um, diagnosis amongst, the, amongst gay and bisexual men have increased dramatically in the last decade. Currently, there are many people in Ireland who would be using PrEP privately, and there is, is the system that they can access it that the HSE has set up where they would pay for 30, 60 to 90 euros for a 30 day supply. This motion calls for it to be made freely publicly available. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Ian. Is there a second of a motion, number 11? Formally seconded? Yes, formally seconded. Um, now, I just want to, to, to go back to motion number 6 and motion number 8. Uh, is there a mover for motion number six in the name of the Green Hills Will Willie Cremens branch? Uh, Siobhan, you're moving, formally moving. Uh, sorry, uh, is, is there a seconder? Uh, Dennis, sorry, you're going, to, well, uh, uh, you go, you're going to second it, Pamela? Okay, go ahead, second it, Pamela. conference um, I'm here to propose what is actually a core value of the Labour Party affordable quality health care that people can access without having to to think about can I go there I haven't got the money to go there and that that in in our current economy which is improving dramatically people shouldn't have to think like that and I, I call on conference to support it. Plus, we need um, proper primary health care. Because currently, if you go to hospitals, you are queuing up for hours and hours and hours, particularly if you have no money. Pro if we have proper primary health care, it means you don't have to go and queue up for hours for small issues. These aren't, this isn't the type of um, measure that would cost a fortune. We can afford to do it, and the only reason we aren't actually doing it is because we're providing tax cuts to people who already have money. So I ask you to support this motion, Conference. Thank you, Pamela. <laughs> now, again, I, I want to call uh, uh, on the my Cullen Uchtarard branch. Is there anybody to move motion number eight on mental health? 
be a very great pity to let it fall. Suggestion that it be formally moved from the floor. Yeah. Um, I'm going to uh, I'm going to ask standing orders to give us some guidance on these issues uh, for tomorrow. I know, but he's not from the branch. Okay, uh, comrades, there, 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 there are a few issues arising here uh, in the course of this um, session which will, will, will require some attention from standing or others. And, um, no, it's not even moved. No, it's not moved. It's not moved. Um, I want to, uh, the, motion, the motion falls. Uh, I, 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 uh, I want to call on speakers now on motions number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10 and 11. Any speakers? No speakers offering, so I want to invite... Sorry, yeah. Motion 10. James, did you... 10, 10. No, you don't speak on it. You take your hand, <laughs> Meanwhile, if, uh, if, the, if anybody knows anyone from the uh, My Cullen Uchtarard branch, I'd still take it if they get here before the end of the, the session. Okay, I'll be very brief. Brian Aylward, Northern Ireland delegate. I want to speak strongly in support of motion 10, um, but I would just ask people in the room not to forget women in Northern Ireland. While there is a very good chance that the new uh, welcome abortion regime will be um, implemented in the South here by the 1st of January, there will still be highly likely to be a circumstance where the law in Northern Ireland that shall govern abortion will continue to be the 1861 Offences Against the Person Act, and this is unacceptable. We have a circumstance where women from Northern Ireland are still having to go to Britain for abortions, because in Northern Ireland you can only obtain an abortion if there is a serious threat to the life and or health of the mother, and that is unacceptable. Um, so. Uh, I totally support this, but I would ask for your continued solidarity because we're still in circumstances where women are being prosecuted for um, obtaining abortion pills online. There's a woman currently being hauled before the courts um, um, because she obtained an abortion pill for her 15-year-old daughter. Um, obviously, this is unacceptable, and she is challenging the decision of the Public Prosecution Service uh, to press charges against her with the support of Amnesty and other NGO groups. And there's also been the recent decision um, of the courts in Northern Ireland to allow Sarah Ewart to um, um, challenge Northern Ireland's abortion laws. Um, and Sarah Ewart, for those of you who don't know, was a person who in 2013 had to obtain an abortion because she got the news that her fetus had a fatal fetal um, abnormality. Uh, every time this issue um, has come before the Assembly, the DUP and others have deployed the petition of concern. And I won't go into the details of the petition of concern now, but if anyone wants to come and ask me about it afterwards, feel free to do so as it would take up all my speaking time. So um, absolutely support this motion, but we continue to need solidarity from pro-choice campaigners here in the South. Uh, but for all of these reasons and many more besides, I still would ask you to support this motion. Thank you. Now, um, are there any other speakers on any of the motions? Eileen? And again, if there is anyone who knows anyone from Mike Cullen Uchtarard,
Sorry, this is really just a point of information in relation to um, the first motion, which I'm fully in support of. And the second point reads, the abolition of the means test for carer's allowance where the carer has been medically assessed and qualifies for the allowance from a medical perspective as requiring full-time care and attention. To my knowledge, the carer is assessed financially, but the person they are caring for is the person who's assessed medically. So it may be a typo. Just wanted to bring that to your attention. Thank you. Thanks, Eileen. Now, are there any other speakers offering on any of these motions? There are no other speakers offering, so I want to uh, invite the sp party spokesperson on health, Deputy Alan Kelly, TD, uh, to respond uh, to the motions. Thank you. Thank you, Jack, and I'm glad to see you've turned off the clock. Oh, no, it's back. <laughs> I will ignore it a small bit. Um, uh, colleagues, uh, thanks to everyone who have made the, their contributions tonight in relation to all the motions. I'm actually fully supportive of all the motions. I think we do need to clarify the first one, but the principle of it is sound. Um, carers are so important in our society and have uh, such a, uh, make such a contribution and save the state such an amount of money. And it's the personal touch that we should always support carers. And uh, I believe the motion is very much warranted. Uh, Sloan to Care is something I spent 10 months of my life putting together. I think it is the future of Irish healthcare. It is something that there's very much a labour team throughout. And uh, uh, in standing with the motion here tonight and also the still waiting uh, motion principle as well, uh, obviously the Labour Party will be 100% supporting Sloan to Care into the future. Uh, the motion in relation to GP crisis is from my own branch in Tipperary because I believe this is one of the biggest issues facing healthcare in our country. You cannot continue to have a situation where the GPs in this country are treated in the manner in which they are treated. You cannot have a situation in this country where we have the lack of GPs in the way in which we have them in this country. It's at crisis point. The healthcare system is about to break down if we don't deal with this issue. So obviously I very much support that uh, motion. Um, in relation to uh, disability uh, first, um, uh, this is something that uh, I'm really fully supported, supportive of and I would thank my colleagues in Labour Disability who I've met on a number of occasions for fo putting forward this motion. This is a quite practical motion and something anyone associated with the Labour Party should be 100% supportive of. A um, number of motions in, relations to, uh, in relation to mental health. And may I remind this party that we were the party who brought forward the vision for change and we were the party who brought forward a plan for mental health in this country. It hasn't been implemented is the issue. I want to agree with my colleagues uh, from Clondalk in relation to gambling. Gambling is a scourge. It, everyone can enjoy a bet. But the situation is, particularly with the advent of ease of gambling on mobile devices, it is becoming a scourge for people in this country and particularly young people. And I've been working on legislation, working with a number of people in relation to this, and something is going to have to be done in relation to dealing with this matter. So I'm 100% supportive of this motion. It's something I take a particular interest in. I know of people who have been affected by this, so I'm glad it's reached the conference floor here. Uh, I am, uh, the, motions, uh, the motion from Labour women is something that uh, obviously 100% support and the great work that was done by everyone in this room and my colleagues in relation to uh, repealing the Eighth Amendment and obviously the work of Labour women. Um, uh, this motion is something that is uh, something, very, something very important. I'm obviously next Tuesday uh, beginning the committee stages uh, amendments uh, to this uh, legislation that needs to be brought forward to the Houses of Rockers as quickly as possible to ensure that we can have uh, abortions in this country uh, from the 1st of January. May I just take this opportunity, this conference though, to note the absolute barbaric amendments that are being put down by some people who are opposed to this legislation. And quite frankly, they should be bloody well ashamed of themselves to be bringing forward amendments that suggest that women who are going through this situation should have to uh, behave in such a manner. It is absolutely disgraceful uh, uh, to have to, uh, as a legislator, uh, look at these people putting forward such amendments. 
Um, I also want to say, though, in relation to um, this whole topic, I, I think it's a, a very central theme that we, the Labour Party, should adopt the following. And I note my colleague Jerry Burke out there in the audience, who's been an uh, advocate for this for many years, is that all services during pregnancy, all services for all women in this country should be free. And that's something we should be pushing forward as a, as a party. I was approached by some colleagues in relation to the, the last motion in relation to making PrEP freely available uh, to stop the spread of HIV and ensuring that there's a campaign of awareness and education in relation to this issue. I was told of a story of a young man who actually hadn't enough money to pay for this when he needed it. That's not appropriate. That's not the way uh, it should be in our country. Um, absolutely anybody who's in need of this should be able to get this and the fact that you don't have uh, the few bob in your pocket should not be the reason. This is about the health of our country, it's about the health of young men and women around this country and I fully 100% support this motion. Um, I just want to say a few words on health um, uh, given the fact that the chairman has been so generous with his time. Um, colleagues, I just want to say this, uh, we're now in the beginning of November and our country is facing in to absolute hell when it comes to our health services this winter. We've had seven years of Fine Gael Ministers for Health and in the last two and a half years we have seen an accentuation of the differentiation between, uh, for, uh, uh, into a, a two-tier health system. And it was never more glaringly obvious than it was through the task report that actually came out today which shows that the inequalities in relation to health based on income are actually some, one of the widest in, in Europe in our own country. And they've been accentuated more so in the last two and a half years while the current Taoiseach finished up his time as Minister for Health and of course Minister Harris has been in place. We have a situation now where we have uh, our under sixes have uh, GP cards but of course they've stalled on the under twelves. Why? because Fine Gael doesn't believe in universal health care, doesn't believe in the publicly funded health care system, doesn't believe uh, that if you have some money, you should be entitled to a proper health service. We have 9,000 people waiting on trolleys in October, the largest figure in the history of our country. And wait for this. For every one child that was waiting 18 months for an outpatient uh, appointment two years ago, there are now 20. That's in two years, colleagues. Like in two years, that figure has multiplied by 20, the amount of children that are waiting. And yet, we have Minister Harris, who still hasn't put in place a plan for this winter, who still hasn't put in place a plan for uh, our waiting list, and who still hasn't put in a plan to deal with a whole range of chronic issues, including many of those that are faced by children, including scoliosis, that is actually working. We have a situation where our nurses are about to go on strike, and rightly so. We have a situation where um, our GPs are in crisis, where professionalism means that uh, nurses, doctors, consultants, and many other professionals are choosing to leave the country because of pay inequality, which has to be dealt with, and also because of the working conditions in our health service, particularly in our hospitals. It cannot continue. And I tell you solemnly, I believe that because of Fine Gael's health care policies, we will have people die this winter who should not die because of the inequality we have in our health service, because of the way in which people are treated. And one thing that absolutely galls me as an example of where we are when it comes to health service in this country, and it's this. You're driving along in your car and you hear a radio ad, and it's this a uh, famous ad which absolutely drives me insane, which is, isn't it good to know in an emergency, in an emergency, it's good to know that you can have access to a nice, friendly, private A&E to deal with all your issues. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, colleagues. In our health service in this country, What's in your pocket should not be the reason you are treated at an A&E in this country. What's in your pocket should be irrelevant. 
It should be based on your medical situation and medical need. And if there's ever an example of how Fine Gael are driving a two-tier health service, are ensuring that money is the medium by which health care is uh, being delivered, that is a glaring example of it. The push-on that we have to ensure that private practice above public health service is always to the fore, and it always will be while they have controls of the lever in, in health care in this country. Um, colleagues, I want to conclude by making a, 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 an ask of you, and it's this, is that tomorrow, uh, in conjunction with Labour Women, we have three fantastic uh, people who are being awarded the Joe Cox Award. Uh, they are Vicky Phelan, Stephen Teep, uh, and Lorraine Mulch. I know all three of them personally. I know them all very well. I would count them as friends now. Um, we are giving them this award, and Labour Women are giving them this award uh, because they are campaigning on cervical check and the launch of the 221 Plus uh, group. What happens... What ha What happened uh, to the women affected and their families is not in short of a scandal. It's one of the biggest health scandals in the history of this state. Um, these are amazing people. These are amazing campaigners. I would really ask you uh, and that, to give your attention tomorrow and come along and meet these amazing people who are rightly being uh, given an award by our party in recognition of the overwhelming campaign that they are running. Thanks very much. Uh, thank you, Alan. You can thank the Mike Cullen Uchtarard branch for the extra time there. Um, um, now, we're going to put uh, these motions to the floor. They, I think, are non-contentious. Uh, motion number one, all agreed? They're quite non-contentious, I think. Uh, motion number two, all agreed? Agreed. Motion number three, all agreed? Agreed. Motion number four, all agreed? If anybody wants to vote no, shout. <laughs> Motion number five, all agreed? Agreed. Motion number six, all agreed? Agreed. Motion number seven, all agreed? Motion number eight fell. Motion number nine, all agreed. Agreed. Motion number 10, all agreed. Agreed. Motion number 11, 